Hey UBC, happy Black History Month. As you know, all month long, the Children's Ministry is highlighting a few of the Black heroes among us, accomplished individuals who are making a difference through the work they do each and every day. Let's check out this week's spotlight. Hey, my name is Bryson Mittman. I'm 11 years old, and today I'll be interviewing Mr. D. Curtis Lawson. Where are you from? I am originally from Jersey City, New Jersey. That's where I was born. But most of my young adult life, I grew up in Ohio, Warrensville Heights, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. What do you do? Uh, that depends on the day. So recently, I retired from the healthcare industry, and now I am working at North Carolina Central University. The um, first half of my career, I was a research scientist at Duke University and the Durham VA. And then the second half of my career, I was a senior hospital administrator. So I retired in December. I have, um, I've been in athletics all of my life as well, uh, both as a student athlete and then as a coach and now as an administrator. So that's what I'm doing. How long have you been at UBC? I have, uh, my wife and I and my sons have been at UBC for approximately 20 years. Yep. Yeah. What inspired you to attend a HBCU? What does H and what does HBCU mean? Two part question, and I'll start with HBCU. So an HBCU is a historically black college and university, and a black history fact: the oldest HBCU is Chain University, and that was founded in the early 1800s. In Pennsylvania, but I, um, what inspired me to attend a HBCU, I was actually uh, recruited to North Carolina Central University um, on an athletic scholarship. So I started my college career at um, Ohio University, which is a UWI, so there's another acronym for you, and that's a predominantly white uh, institution. And then I attended a junior college, and then I attended North Carolina Central University. And I played uh, basketball and tennis in college. Do you have a favorite tennis player? I have um, a couple of uh, favorites, and I would say that uh, my top three would be Arthur Ashe, Roger Federer, and Maybe I'll add an extra two for Venus and Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are all champions, both on the court and off the court. And um, I think that they have, have done so much for the sport of, of tennis. So those are, are my favorites. I, I have enjoyed watching each of them. And um, I think that they're phenomenal uh, players and just great human beings. What is your favorite thing about being a, about serving as a associate athletic director and tennis coach? I'm going to answer that in reverse order. So tennis coach, that's an easy one because I've been doing that for uh, three decades now. And the one thing that I really enjoy about um, being a tennis coach is just watching my players uh, develop um, not only as student athletes, but um, developing into um, adults and being able to go out into society and do amazing things. So I've got players who are now uh, doctors, lawyers, scientists, teaching uh, tennis professionals, and uh, some that now have their own families and children, and being able to um, to be a part of, of their success. It's been really fulfilling. Regarding the Associate Athletic Director, 
that is a new position for me, at least within athletics, but um, it is a familiar space because um, I've been around athletics all of my life, um, and I've been an administrator, albeit in the healthcare industry, um, for over three decades. So it kind of marries both of my professions into one. Um, my passion and kind of my trade. What inspire your organization's annual loss in charity golf classic? My charity golf classic was actually created in memory of my dad, uh, Dr. J. Ronaldo Lawson, who was a uh, two-time cancer survivor of prostate and bone cancer. And um, then he eventually developed a, um, a rare cancer that um, eventually was, um, he went on to heaven. Um, and so in memory of um, my dad, I decided he, he was a, an avid golfer. He loved golf, played it all the time. Um, and I never really liked golf. Um, when I was younger, um, but because of my dad, I love it now, and I play it all the time. So the golf tournament, um, all of the proceeds from the, the tournament um, are donated to charitable organizations, um, the American Cancer Society, the Boys and Girls Club of America, uh, the First Tee Program, uh, here in the Triangle and uh, North Carolina Central University has started a uh, scholarship in his name. So um, it's a good tournament for people that love golf. Uh, it's a good tournament for people that want to support a good cause. And uh, we've been able to do a lot of good things for now since the tournament has uh, started now in its fifth year. You're also a member of a historically black great letter organization. Can you say more about the importance of your organization? Yes, I um, I think that, uh, so I'm a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and um, founded November 17th, 1911, Howard University. And I think that my organization has uh, served uh, the community in so many different ways. Um, we try to be positive role models for uh, young um, black and brown uh, college uh, men, young men, and try to shape them uh, into future leaders so that uh, they are able to go out in the world and uh, be change agents, to be champions, to do great things. That uh, is always our, our charge. So I am proud to be a member of the fraternity. I try to be a good representative. My dad was a um, was a member of Omega Psi Phi uh, fraternity. He was a big influence on um, me wanting to become an Omega. So. That's why I was inspired and continue to be inspired. What do you love most about our black history? I love the fact that there is at least a period of time during the year and it should be celebrated every day because um, the contributions of African Americans um, is boundless. We've done so many great things and to be able to um, to celebrate you know, all of the marvels, all of the, the, the greatness uh, that um, African Americans have, have contributed to the society. I, I think that's what I enjoy the most is um, just the not only the national recognition, but uh, it's a global recognition of African American contributions. As an accomplished athlete and a healthcare professional, what is one piece of wisdom you will offer to young black hip children 
hoping to be good students and great athletes. If I had to give one um, piece of advice, I would simply say dream big. And remember that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Don't let anyone tell you anything differently. There's a phrase that if you can see it, you believe it, you can achieve it. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And I guess I, I will tell you a story. So my parents, um, who were both educators, um, my dad was a college professor. My mother was um, a, she retired as a um, high school principal, but she was a teacher, she was a counselor, she was an administrator. They gave me a, a chemistry set when I was year 11 years old. I was about 11 years old. And in that chemistry set, it had um, all of these little chemicals that you could mix, mix in a test tube and a uh, Bunsen burner and um, a periodical chart. And I was just intrigued by that. And I would play with it, I would create things, and luckily I didn't blow up anything. But because they introduced that to me, I fell in love with science, and it was something that ultimately led to me becoming a scientist. And so I think that being exposed to different things, um, being able to be encouraged, you know, in a positive way that hey, you can do anything that you want to do. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. I do too. So that would be my advice. Dream big, believe in yourself, and good things will happen. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Coach Lawson, thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time. I enjoyed it. UBC, would you join me in celebrating Mr. D. Curtis Lawson? Mm -hmm.